I'll just give it a few seconds to allow all the attendees to arrive. How are you this morning, Jodie? Good, thanks. How are you, Julie? Great. Thank you. We have quite a few joining us today. Halfway there. We are halfway there. I think we'll actually start just to make sure that we keep to time and honour those people who joined right on time. So thank you very much. Um, first of all, uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Julie Bissuttle and I am the program manager for Landcare, uh, sorry, Landcare for Local Land Services. And my co-host here is Jodie Lovell, who is the Program Manager for Landcare New South Wales. And we both jointly manage the uh, statewide Landcare program. And I just wanted to start by acknowledging country. Uh, I acknowledge traditional owners past, present and emerging from all the lands of where you're coming from today. I'm in Wiradjuri country and we're about to see you, Jodie. I'm in Bunurong country. Bunjalong, can't say that word, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, we This is the second webinar. There's only two webinars. If you missed the first one, don't panic. I'll show you where to find that recording and you can go back and have a look at that. Because really that was the, that was the starting webinar, uh, I think it was day two when the grant actually opened. So it's worth going through that. Um, there's been a considerable number of questions as you would expect. I think we've got over a hundred questions come through the centralised mailbox um, so far and I will just reiterate thank you very much for um, making sure that you follow that process of actually uh, Lakshmi is going to put in the uh, the, the question slash chat section there of where you actually you know, what is the email address that you need to use. Um, and I would also just like to say, sorry, there's things jumping up everywhere for me. Um, what we're going to run through today is the main changes that have happened. So the frequently asked questions have been updated and we're gonna, we're gonna call those out and show you. Um, and also just to reiterate some of the key points through the application process as well. And also we, you, you're able to ask questions, so you can start to log questions. Um, you should all be able to see the chat slash questions, but you're gonna go through that anyway in a minute, Jodie. Actually, I think we'll go to you for housekeeping. Yep, I'll just- uh, Would you like me to share? Or no, that's okay. Yep, I'm sharing, that's fine. Hopefully everyone can see the housekeeping slide there now. So just a couple uh, of- um, Yes. Yeah, just a couple of points to note there on housekeeping. So um, the way in which this webinar will be run today, everyone will be muted except for Julie and myself as the presenters. Um, only the presenters will be seen. So only you'll only get to see our beautiful faces on the screen, um, even though there's lots of you joining us from all across the state. And we'll share our screens to run through the frequently asked questions. You are welcome to log questions in the questions section, which I'll run through how you do that on the next slide. And those questions we will try and answer throughout the webinar. If not, they will be answered and responded to um, directly via the LEP email address. So as you can see, we'll, this will be recorded, as Julie said, and made available after the session, which you'll be able to find at that um, email, at that web address there, um, newsouthwales.gov.au LEP under program resources. So I'll just move to the next slide, which will just help you to navigate the go-to webinar. So to log a question, what you need to do is you should be able to see, um, enter a question for staff. There's a little questions tab. If you can't see it, you can open it by clicking there, and then you can type your question in here and click enter. If you can't see this part on your screen, just go here and you'll see the little orange box with the white arrow. Just open, that opens the side panel. So it looks like this, and then you'll be able to see question slash chat. And then you'll be able to see this part where you can type in your question. And as I said, we'll try and answer as many questions as we can 
during the webinar, um, but if not, they will be logged and then answered um, using the process through the um, LEP mailbox. So that's the housekeeping for now. I'll stop sharing my screen, Julie, and if you're wanting to share yours. Yes, thank you, Jodie. I'm just putting my webcam back on. Um, so can you just, can you see my screen, Jodie? Just give me a thumbs up. Am I sharing my screen? Can you see my screen, Jodie? Are you there, Jodie? Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay, you must have muted yourself, but that's yeah, fine. Yeah, no, I can hear you, but I I'm can't assuming... see you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you can't see my screen. Okay, uh, that's odd because I am sharing. Uh, so you can't see my screen. I'm waiting to view. Oh, the screen. Lakshmi said yeah. that yes, screen is visible. Oh, Thank you, everyone, I'll for putting that right. in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now we're off and running. <laughs> okay, so uh, Lakshmi, if you can just add in the um, in the chat there, I'm, I'm so sorry, but I don't know why these keep coming coming up there. But uh, if you can add the link to the main web page, Lakshmi, so that people can follow. Um, I just, you're probably already very, very familiar with this page, but I just wanted to show you once again, it's best to come to this website page first. And there is a lot of information on this page. You can download it as a PDF. You can print this page. You can share the page. Um, there's some key information here. Just noting that, yes, the 3rd of November is actually next Friday. So there is not long to go now until the uh, grant is closed. And I would also suggest that you download the program guidelines now because that's, that's that has key information um, that, that you really need to be looking at as well. The Frequently Asked Questions and this website does pull the key information out of the program guidelines as well, but it's always good to have those guidelines with you. Uh, with the Frequently Asked Questions, I would also suggest that you have that open um, at all times because that also could be, we've only had two updates and I'll show you in a moment what those updates are. Um, and the other thing that I just wanted to draw your attention to on here is people were looking for the role descriptions in the last webinar. Apologies, they weren't up there at that time, but they are now. They are general role descriptions um, and just gives you an idea of what the what each of the roles um, we you know, we expect to see um, deliver. And also just coming down here, there is this program resources section. It's very important that you also be aware of that, particularly because the budget template has been updated. That only happened yesterday and it actually includes the 10% uh, admin um, costings for the Regional Administration Support Officer. Um, so please make sure you re-download that. We do apologise that um, you know we've had to up update that, but here we are. Um, and I've been told that the sample funding deed will be available shortly as well. Um, and here is the first recording of the first webinar. If you have not, if you didn't, if you haven't seen that, there it is. There, please um, have a look at that as well. Um, so, what we're going to do? Oh, sorry. The other thing I would say is this is how you actually link in to apply to the application. So, um, just showing you that uh, briefly. Um, we can see that uh, I'm already logged in, which is quite handy. Um, so there, there are, there has been quite a lot of questions around what some of the questions mean through that um, online form. We are responding as quickly as we can. We appreciate your patience. And please keep sending if there are specific questions that you have to do with your situation 
or you're not sure about something in the form, please keep sending them through that centralised mailbox that we're checking every day, multiple times a day. Um, so that's how, and then if you've already started a submission, you can just go into my submissions here and click on um, the actual application form and away you go. And if you haven't already gone through and actually started an application, if you're intending to, I would strongly suggest that you, you actually at least go in there and start having a look at what the application looks like because there are quite a different, um, there are different sections to be completed. Um, and also just noting that um, it does have here on the on the front page who are the eligible applicants and who are ineligible and also um, the instructions for applicants. I always like to go in and, and tick these things off just to make sure that you've actually done um, what's required um, and also just um, yeah there's a lot of things in there about privacy and conflicts of interest and then I do know that when you save the page, it does automatically uh, just go right up to the top of that same page. Um, look, it's just the way Smarty Grants is, but you can always navigate by clicking next page, or you can also um, drop down to any one of these sections. You know, if I want to go straight to program outcomes, I can just click that way. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, again, if you have any problems, let us know through that centralised email. Okay, so uh, Jody, I might um, might come back to you now. Uh, I've, I'll continue to share screen if you like, but if you'd like yeah, to just come great. on. Yeah, definitely. Um, I can't so, see you, so I'm going to turn That's okay. Off. No, I, I can see your screen, so thank you. Um, so we're just going to run through um, as Julie moves through the questions. So we're currently on the frequently asked questions page. Um, and this is where we've been updating. There was a considerable list of questions that were there from the beginning. And as your questions are coming in through that centralized mailbox, where there's certain themes and we're getting common questions, we're updating this frequently asked questions page. So it's really um, worthwhile checking here regularly to make sure there's no new questions that have been added. And some of your common questions, if you've got a question that may be answered. So it's good to check here first before sending an email in to the, um, the centralized mailbox. But one of the updated questions, we've been getting a few questions around the, um, the FTE and being able to split and share um, the FTE positions. So FTE stands for full-time equivalent and for the purposes of this program and coordinator positions and the um, regional admin support officer role, um, a full-time equivalent equates to 35 hours a week, Monday to Friday. The minimum FTE for this program per role is 0.5 FTE. The maximum FTE is one for those local and regional land care coordinator roles for the regional admin support officer role that is um, capped at 0.5 FTE. So that's a, a 0.5 FTE role. Um, preferences will be given to applications that provide for full-time arrangements for local and regional land care coordinator roles, but these we are we're making sure that there's that flexibility worked in as well. So there is um, they can be subject to part-time or job sharing arrangements, but just noting again that minimum is minimum is 0.5 FTE and it can be refilled if it becomes vacant during the employment period. So um, if full-time arrangements are not achievable, so it's best just to note in your application why you're splitting the role or why it's less than one FTE within your application for the assessment panel. So that has been updated just to explain around the questions of being able to split below 0.5, but the minimum that it can be split to is 0.5 FTE and each role can be split at just twice. Yeah, so thank you. that's all right. So just scrolling down to um, the next updated question. So um, we've had a couple of questions around, there was a question there within the application that talks about aligning um, your strategic plan for your region or your regional land care plan with land care New South Wales key focus areas for the region. And we just wanted to clarify that 
Land Care New South Wales doesn't have key focus areas for regions, but it does have a strategic plan. So applicants can consider aligning their activities and expected outcomes during the next four years to existing relevant plans, such as the Local Land Services Natural Resource Management Plan for your region or for the state, and also the Land Care New South Wales Strategic Plan. The Land Care New South Wales Strategic Plan can be found on the Land Care New South Wales website, um, and you just go to governance and you'll see that there. Um, if you scroll down to the strategic plan, um, and then you can add this in addition to your regional land care strategy or regional land care plan for your region that you've developed. So just to clarify that you don't have to look for key focus areas for your region that Land Care New South Wales has, that doesn't exist, but there is a Land Care New South Wales strategic plan that you can help to align your, your regional plans with. So the next question there is around, um, we've had a lot, of, a lot of questions around whether a local host organisation who's seeking to host a local land care coordinator position, whether they should apply via Stream 2 or should they be part of their region's application under Stream 1. So we just wanted to outline here the two options that are available for local host organisations who are seeking to fund um, LLC FTE roles. And so the first option is that a local host organisation may get in touch with their regional land care organisation and work with them to be included in the regional application if a regional application is being prepared. So this is the Stream 1 application. Um, the funding deed and accountability will, with local land services will lie with that regional host application who is um, applying through Stream 1. But then the local land care groups would have a separate auspicing arrangement, for example, a subcontract with their regional body to host the LLC position. So these arrangements are managed by the successful applicant, the regional applicant and the relevant auspicing subcontracting organisation, but they're separate to the funding deed with local land services. So local land care groups can work with their regions to put in a combined regional application that includes the one or two of the regional positions, the RLC and their regional admin support officer role, as well as local land care coordinator positions. The second option there is that the local host organisation may also apply under Stream 2 to host the LLC just on their own as a um, direct application and only relates to the position that the local host is wanting to um, apply for. So it's possible that um, the host may apply for only one or both, like when a regional application is put in under stream one. Um, the only requirement there is that the RLC position is applied for in a stream one application. So they can apply for one, so the RLC role, or they can apply for both regional roles, which includes the regional admin support officer role as well. And then they may also wish to include in that stream one application, all of the LLC FTA allocation for the region some of the LLC allocation or none at all. They may, they, Stream 1 applications can just include one or two of those regional positions and no LLC roles. But priority will be given to applications that seek the maximum funding and FTE allocation for their region. Um, and as it says there, employment of a regional admin support officer is recommended, but it is optional. Um, an application can reallocate if you choose not to to go uh, apply for a regional admin support officer role, you can reallocate this 0.5 FTE towards the local land care coordinator role, noting though this will have a budgetary impact on your application. So stream one applicants within the same region will be competitively assessed and ranked against the eligibility and merit assessment criteria, which is outlined in the program guidelines. So we'll just scroll down to the next one there. So these are all of the, the new questions that we've been added. So can a successful regional or local host organisation have an MOU or other arrangement with another organisation to provide resource support, such as office space, vehicle access and the like? So the guidelines do not specify restrictions on MOUs or other arrangements providing resource support. Um, these arrangements are to be managed solely by the successful applicant with the organisations providing support. So applications will be assessed against deliverability of um, the grant, which includes their ability to employ, host and manage staff up until the 30th of June, 2027. So it's recommended the applicants address how this arrangement would support deliverability in your application. 
So it's possible here, and I'll address this in the next question as well, but it's possible here that existing arrangements that exist um, in some regions where um, local land care coordinators are hosted by a local council or there's resource support provided such as office space within a local council office or within an LLS office, those arrangements can continue, but the regional applicant that is successful needs to have those arrangements directly with the third party or um, support subcontractor organisation. The local land services will only have a contract and a funding deed directly with the successful applicant. So with the Stream 1 applicant, um, that's who LLS will have the funding deed with. And then anything outside of that for um, subcontracting, resource support needs to be arranged directly between the regional applicant and the third party. So hopefully that's clear, but any other questions around that, please feel free to email that centralised mailbox. So I've sort of covered on this in regards to local government. So within the eligibility criteria, you'll see that um, local councils and local land services are ineligible to apply directly um, as a grant recipient. But they do not, they don't specify within the guidelines um, around auspicing or subcontracting arrangements. So the things that we talked about, um, you know, you can still do that with the regional success or regional host organisation once they've been successful in um, securing the funding for those positions. And then you can organise a third party arrangement. But we do ask that you include details of these arrangements within your application. But the, the main thing to note here is that the arrangements are managed by the, between the successful applicant and the relevant auspicing or subcontracting organisation, and it's separate to the funding deed with local land services, and that all of the accountability and reporting milestone payments remain with the successful applicant. Um, so that covers those two areas around, you know, auspicing and subcontracting of positions under a Stream 1 application. Um, the next question there is around the budget. So Julie mentioned that the program budget template can be found under program resources on that landing homepage um, for the grant. And it has been updated to um, include a 10% admin fee for the um, regional admin support officer position. So that's been updated and now is included. But it also has been brought to our attention that there may be some discrepancies between the total um, funding amount available within the um, application and in the grant guidelines for each region, and then what is calculated once you put in your FTE within the budget template. But these are because of um, uh, some, I think, because there's indicative okay. commencement date of the 1st of February. So the program budget template calculates cost of FTE based on the roll time. And at that, the way it's calculated is that it starts on the 1st of February. But this is subject to change. So, but the main thing that you need to note when using that budget template is that you insert the required FTE by role. And then the final funding amount will be confirmed during the contracting stage between the successful applicant and local land services. So all roles are based on a 35 hour week using the local land services award to determine budget amounts. But we do encourage you to seek professional taxation or employment guidance in regards to what award is, is suitable for the roles that you're employing um, before submitting your application. So you understand your obligations as an employee to your, as an employer to your employees. Julie, is there anything else you wanted to add there around the budget template? Uh, no, I think, I think that's pretty clear. Once you download the budget template again, you will see the changes. Um, and yeah, you've already covered off on, on why there might be discrepancies um, appearing. Um, just make sure you put the total number of FTE by role uh, into the budget template. That's the critical bit and, and the contracting phase will confirm um, the total amount that will go to successful applicants. But we're getting a lot of questions here, here Jody. so we might, um, we might just stop sharing screen screen just so that everyone can see just you and I. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we will try and answer the questions as best we can. Now if, if we can't answer the questions then rest assured as I said you will be you will receive the answer after um, directly to you after this uh, webinar. 
Um, so the first question there, if a local coordinator gets less than one allocated, I assume one FTE allocated, then they have to use the full allocation. That's a significant loss of flexibility. I'm not really sure on what the question is asking there. So if there is a full FTE for a local land care coordinator, that can be split into 2.5 roles. Um, that can't be split lower than 0.5. I'll just reiterate that. Um, so I'm sorry, um, the person who asked that, we might have to come back to you after this session to delve a bit more deeper into your specific question there. Um, there is another question there, who will be the other party to local group contracts, LLS, New South Wales or the Land Care Region. So I'm assuming um, you're referring to Stream 2 applications um, that are with local group host organisations. Um, so the funding deed will be with LLS and the successful local group, um, local host organisation. Um, if you're referring to Stream 1 in the sense where you might have a regional host organisation applying, but as part of that, they have several different land care groups, networks or councils supporting them in employing a local coordinator, if that's the question that you're asking. LLS has the direct um, funding deed with the successful regional host organisation and any of those other arrangements, as uh, Jody had already mentioned, any councils who are employing a um, local coordinator, that arrangement is solely with the regional host organisation. So we only deal with the regional host organisation. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and that's to do with the contract, that's not to do with the broader support mechanism that uh, Land Care New South Wales obviously is providing as part of this program. Um, will local groups be subcontractors to a region? That's a very good question. Um, again, that is the arrangement that you really need to be speaking with the regional host organisation who is um, intending to apply for a Stream 1 application that you may be a part of. That subcontracting, that MOU, whatever that arrangement is, is between the regional host and um, those organisations. Um, oh, okay, thank you for clarifying that question that um, I was referring to before about if a local coordinator gets less than one allocated, as in if it gets a 0.8 FTE allocated to that specific network, then that additional or that remaining 0.2 FTE is still there somehow. There might be two groups that have 0.8, which end, uh, sorry, there might be three groups that have all 0.8 which there is 0.6 FTE left over, that could go to another coordinator. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, is 0.5 FTE is minimum? Sorry, I'm just trying to read the question. Why have some regions been given an allocation of, say that's a very good question, of 6.75 FTE? Um, just to clarify, it's actually a good point. Um, just to clarify, in the guidelines it has a table of total number of local coordinator FTE, total number of RLC FTE and the if you choose to do um, apply for the regional administration support officer is 0.5. That total of 6.75 local coordinators is only if you don't have that 0.5 FTE regional administration support officer. If you do want a, that regional support officer and an RLC, and the remaining of the local coordinators, you have to take 0.5 off of that LLC. Is that making sense, Jody? Give me a nod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jody. So what happens is um, we've had this question a couple of times. So the table, um, what you need to understand is that the um, the FTE underneath within the LLC column is the maximum LLC FTE. So that's if you're not applying for the um, regional admin support officer role, that's what you can apply for in total for the LLC. But if you do apply for the regional admin support officer, you need to take 0.5 FTE off that figure that's in the LLC column. So for example, there at the top of that table, that's 6.75. If you were to apply for the 0.5 regional admin support officer role, 
then the total for your LLC positions would come down to 6.25. And um, the question there is often with 6.75, you were talking about um, why, if you can't use 0.25, why is 0.75 there? Because you can use 0.75, you don't have to use 0.5. So you, there could be six yes. full time equivalent roles and there could be a 0.75 equivalent role, or it could be that you divide that 6.75 evenly among how many networks are within your region that, that are requiring local land care coordinator positions and that might work out to 0.8 or 0.6 or 0.75 each. So it's just, there's, there is flexibility worked in, but the minimum FTE that can be applied for is a 0.5 FTE position. So there is flexibility about between one and 0.5, but just not below 0.5. And uh, the other thing I thought would be worth pointing out too, Julie, is um, within uh, the application itself, um, within question 33, yep. where you actually specify um, the roles that you're wanting to apply for, um, there's a note section. So you can oh, put in, it. yeah, that's right. So it's question 33, and it, that's where you allocate if you're going to apply for the RLC position, the admin position, and the LLC positions, and how many of each, so the role breakdown. Um, but it's worth specifying there that in the notes column, that final um, column there that talks about notes, that's where you can include information on um, who the auspicing or who the, the host may be of the local land care role, or even for the, um, if there's third party arrangements for your regional land care coordinator or regional admin support officer role, um, who that third party arrangement is with. So you can put those details there in that notes column. Just yes, that might be worth so just, that and, and that's a very good point. And I might just give an example here. Um, so as, a, as you just said, regional land care coordinator, and they want them for all four years or three and a half now. Um, what the equivalent is, is a full FTE um, and will be hosted by whatever the regional land care group is. And you can open that up a bit more and add more details into there. Um, same with here, if you're applying, if, if there is, for example, um, a local council who is employing um, a local coordinator under a stream one application. So obviously they've come up with a with an arrangement with the regional host organisation that, that they will manage. Um, it is worth noting here as well, um, who will be hosting that and what the FTE is there. So just remembering you can't, you can't do 0.25 um, it has to be a minimum of 0.5, but you could have 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 um, to exhaust the full application, a full allocation of the FTE. Um, just wondering, Jodie, if there was any other questions in here. I think I saw one up earlier, but all the questions seem to have gone, Lakshmi. You may have responded directly to them. But yeah, there was a question. There was a question there from um, regarding uh, a conflict of interest for a, uh, a regional LLS to be a third-party host for the RLC position. Um, and there is within the grant guidelines, there's specific information around third-party hosting arrangements for the RLC role. So um, that is possible. That is possible for an, a regional LLS to be a third party host for the RLC position, but you will see within the grant guidelines that there is a requirement um, for that to transition after a two year period. But if you have um, need more specific information, please use the um, centralised mailbox, but there is a lot of information provided within those grant guidelines, but it, it is possible. It's not a conflict of interest for the regional LLS to be a third party host for the RLC position for that first two years as the regional host body transitions to be able to host that for the remaining two years of the four-year program. Yes, that's a mouthful, Jo. <laughs> you did well. So was there a question around conflicts of interest, did you say? Oh, it, it, just within that question it said, is it a conflict of interest oh. for the, um, between a, a regional oh, right. list? No. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but look, if in doubt, you can call it out if you think that, if you're not sure whether it's a conflict of interest, by all means, add it, add it in there. Um, I think it's on the, the very first page. Um, actually, before you even start up the application, there is a conflict of interest section. Um, if in doubt, put it in, is what I would say. Um, any other questions coming through there, Jody? Um, I'm just looking at those now. Yeah, I can still see the questions, but I'm just going through to see if there's any more that. So while you're doing that, that um, this is the conflict of interest thing that I was referring to. Really, I mean, if you've been part of the actual grant process itself, actually designing the grant, implementing the grant, such as you know myself and um, Jody, uh, we would have direct conflicts of interest. So, which is which is why again we encourage or well, everyone must go through the centralised mailbox and not come directly to us because there could be a perceived conflict of interest there. But this question really only refers to that. So um, if you do, if you're in doubt, as I said, please outline what the conflict of, potential conflict of interest is and how you, um, how you propose to manage it. Um, Lakshmi, can I just ask, is there any other questions that we haven't answered there? Yes. Yep, how about I run through some? So one that's come through, can you outline what administration support to the host organisation would be acceptable for the regional local coordinator to provide? Oh, why can't I see those questions? I think you might have the show answers because um, you've got to tick the show answered questions because Lakshmi's been providing answers so they, they get removed. Oh, I couldn't see them either, but now I can. Yes. So I'm going through them. Now um, I can. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you. We, we, now we're on, we know what we're doing, right? So, so I was just within, the, within those, to answer that questions, within the role descriptions, that should give you, under program resources, that should give you some um, clarity around what the, what is, and they're templates, but what is within um, the a regional land care coordinator's role description, um, and also what is within the regional admin support officer role description and also the local land care um, coordinator. So that's probably the, the best place to start in regards to what admin, you know, what admin support can be provided by a regional land care coordinator. There is that within the, in, within the role descriptions that helps to assist. Yeah. There was also right. a question there around, um, there was also a question that I was going to answer in regards to um, we were led to believe this new program was to provide FTE coordinators. This hasn't occurred. Why? Um, so I guess the thing is there is that there, there is more FTE allocated. So the um, there is 83 FTE positions available under the next four year program. All of the FTE for each region, the allocation of FTE for each region has been at least doubled. Um, from the last four year program. So there has been um, a significant increase for each region in the um, FTE equivalent for roles. So a lot of um, roles may have been operating off a 0.25 or a 0.5, they were part-time positions. These are now um, FTE. So you're looking at the allocation per region of being at least double what they current they currently had under the last four year program for the next four years. Excellent. Um, question forty three in the application, um, which I'll go to in a second. Um, the question is. Um, does the question refer to specifically to Lanka New South Wales activities rather than land care activities across New South Wales? So I think I know the question that you're referring to. So just bear with me while I navigate to there. Forty-three. Oh, Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the question that was asked. Um, 
does this particular question refer to Land Care New South Wales activities? Uh, okay, so this actually needs to be updated and we, um, we are in the process of doing that. Essentially, it means to land care activities. So not specifically land care New South Wales activities. Yeah, yeah so we so have picked that up changed. as, um, yeah, that will be changed. Yeah, thanks, so, Madeline. Yes, that will be updated. Yep. Um, now, what's the next one there? Uh, Madeline's got it twice, that's okay. Um, so one of the questions there, there's a couple that this might, this answer might help with, is that um, uh, if if there's an allocation of less than um, one for um, a local coordinator, then they can't split that. But I guess when you're looking, probably the, the, the flexibility comes in when you're looking at a stream one application. So if you're looking at a stream one application, and for example, you've got um, 6.75, as I as the example I gave before, 6.75 allocated for that region um, in LLC positions, then you're able to split those. As long as the LLC position you're applying for is above 0 0.5, then it, then you can break that up. So, because someone there put that if you've got um, two FTE allocated for your region, can you break that into a 0 0.6, a 0 0.6 and a 0 0.8 LLC role? Um, and as long as the um, minimum FTE requirement of 0.5 has been met, then that is acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Um, so I think we already answered that question. Uh, we answered that question. Is there uh, would like groups be answered that if a region has been allocated enough FTEs to provide a full FTE for each? So I've got to reread that question. If a region hasn't been allocated enough FTEs, so I'm assuming this is a case where a region feels they needed more FTE. Is this is that right? I think so. Um, to provide, if the region hasn't been allocated enough FTEs to provide a full FTE for each coordinator, then no LLC role can be split. Um, that's a bit confusing. Um, so as Jody's already mentioned and reiterated, a FTE, if you have, let's say, five LLCs in your region, um, that's the allocation, and you and you can, that could end up being 10.5 LLCs. However, you also got to remember too, this program is about moving from part-time roles under the former program to full-time roles. Um, so, but also there's, there's been flexibility built in and that flexibility is each role has to be a minimum of 0.5 FTE. Um, someone's just mentioned, oh, you've already answered that. Thanks, Lakshmi. Um, uh, is there any other questions that you can see there? Maybe if I can start the other one. I think one, Julie, is um, will stream one be prioritised over stream two? Yes, that's what it says in the actual frequently asked questions. Yeah, one of the questions here is about if a local group applies under both stream one as part of a regional application and stream two, will the stream one application trump the stream two one? So I guess. The, the, the priority is there for Stream 1. So if if um, the Stream 1 application is successful and you're, you're one, then you won't get allocated a second LLC under Stream 2. So it'll be, if you're part of that regional bid, the regional bid will um, be given priority and preference over um, Stream 2 application. And yes, and any, I encourage um, you to go ahead. Any unallocated, any, uh, any unallocated FTE will then be made available for Stream 2 applications, that if you read the grant yes. outlines. Yeah, please read the grant guidelines. It does um, state that in there. Um, I think we'll be updating submission form. There's not be submitting applications from now. A new form need to be completed. It's a very good question. Um, so we were just referring to that question 43. I think, um, I'm not sure if we had a uh, down New South Wales person here, but um, my understanding is you wouldn't have to do another application, but I would de definitely double check that um, 
Larry, who asked that question. So the question is, we we're talking about question 43 and it needs to be updated. Um, if they've already started an application, do they have to go and do another application because that question changes? And I would think it might be worth just reiterating again that it is referring to land care activities within your region and um, we may not end up changing that question if we've reiterated that through the webinar. So we, so we avoid that problem. There's another question here um, that I've just found, Julie, is that does the revised budget template include the expected 2.5% annual wage increase? The the wage price increase, yep. Yep, so yes. that's included. Yep, so I just wanted to yep. answer that there. Um, um, yeah, what's this one? Can we please have the exact link to the program resources? Uh, Lakshmi, can you please add the exact link into the chat if you haven't already done so um, to the program resources? Um, will the assessment panel participants be identified by role? Will the assessment panel participants be identified by role? Not really sure what that means. Um, the yeah, I can't speak about the assessment panel. Um, it will be formed and there will be adequate um, people on that panel. Um, I think uh, if you've got specific questions around that, I would uh, encourage you to send that directly through to the LEP mailbox. Um, okay, so I, have I missed any questions? Like, Shmi, can you please just let me know? I think you've addressed most of the questions, Julie. Yeah. I think a reiteration only of the breakdown of positions. Um, there's lots of questions on the 0.5 split, the minimum. Okay, so the minimum is 0.5. You cannot go any lower, you cannot split it to 2.25. It is the minimum is 0.5. Um, the RSO role or the Regional Admin, Admin Support Officer is only a 0.5. So you can't split that to 2.25s. Um, I think that was clear. Um, and uh, yeah, Jody, did you have something else to no, add there? I, th I think we've covered that. There, there, there's yeah, different questions yeah, and different versions, so. specifics for different regions. But um, yeah, the, the main thing to note is that um, 0.5 is the minimum FTE you can apply for. So you can break that allocation of FTE into different parts, but as long as the minimum, the, the minimum requirement of 0.5 FTE has been met. Yeah. And just to reiterate again, um, as we've already mentioned um, there are third party arrangements which you've already covered Jody. that's the example where a regional land care coordinator may be employed by um, uh, you know, a council or an LLS for up to two years um, please read the third party arrangements it's very clear in there and the the new thing that we've already covered and I'll just reiterate again that a council could choose to employ a local coordinator if they have an arrangement with a successful regional host organisation applying in the stream one. Um, I think there's no other questions there. So I'm just going. But, but, sorry, Julie, there's one more question. <laughs> uh, the application doesn't allow a PO box address for a postal address can this be corrected i will take that up robin thank you um, worst case scenario if the form doesn't change add your po box in one of the um the free text fields and and make it clear but i'll definitely look into that is there a transition plan template that land care new south wales has um, not sure what that means. Um, if you could actually, yeah, maybe just send that through the mailbox. Um, and if we've got any, unless Jodie, you can answer that. Uh, and all of all of the questions, I didn't hear the question, but all of the questions that have been piped into um, 
using the question functionality of this webinar will also be um, answered, provided an answer as well. So they will be added to our spreadsheet of questions. Um, and so if there's again, a common theme coming through from today that needs clarification, please refer to the frequently asked questions page um, on the grant website because there may be some changes made there. And also any questions that we haven't been able to answer um, live online that have been asked and weren't answered, they will be added and then an answer will be provided through from that centralised mailbox as well. So yeah. um, if you've popped a question in, into the question box here, um, we will make sure that it's been answered, if not directly online live, but you'll also receive an answer via the um, centralised mailbox. Uh, yep, there's are, are a couple of more questions there. The funding deed, uh, we've already mentioned that, um, that that needs to be up, up, uploaded as soon as possible. So I'll take that up straight after this. Um, how will it work if Stream 1 or regional applications are successful and they have several local land care or you know, subcontracting um, host arrangements? It's a very good question. That is something that needs to be discussed and arranged between that regional host organisation and the local groups, networks or um, subcontractors who are employing a, a, a local coordinator, they need to arrange that. Um, I would be suggesting starting to have that conversation now. Remembering the funding deed will be with land, uh, local land services and a successful regional host organisation, which means that regional host organisation has all accountability for reporting, the, the financial reporting, the program reporting, that whole contract. So just making sure that that's aware. But I also would add to Jody, and I don't know if you want to add, add this, but in the subsequent phases, there are there is a, a support hub that will be provided um, to support those host organisations who are successful in the program. Yes, I was going to say uh, there was a couple of um, things there in regards to um, support for um, regional hosts that are working with um, auspicing or third party arrangements and also in regards to um, um, operational costs and, and other admin costs. So uh, a new component that um, will be introduced um, hopefully in phase two is, is a shared services hub which um, will provide support to successful hosts um, with things such as um, administration and other parts. So that information um, is something that we're working on now um, and starting to um, scope and look at what shared services we can provide that um, that all of our hosts will have access to, to be able to um, help them with their, their roles as host organisations and, and employers. So um, that that will be available as well once um, successful hosts and, and the phase one grant process has been concluded, um, we'll be able to provide information on the shared services hub as well. Yep, and I just want to clarify once again, because a question came through again about this. For example, if, I'm just going to pick on Central Tablelands because it's the first one there. If Central Tablelands would like to employ a 0.5 regional admin support officer, that means the local land care coordinator maximum FTE will be reduced by 0.5. So this will end up being 5.25. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, or North Coast, because that's easier. It would um, it would drop down to eight LLCs if they're applying for that 0.5 regional administration officer. If they're not, then the full 8.5 can go towards a um, yeah local land care coordinator roles, not FTEs, I should say. Um, just had to reiterate that because it was asked again. Um, Julie, there's a question yeah. there. Sorry, will there be regional community of practice funds available in phase two? Um, yeah. There will be community of practice funds available, but we're not going to speak about what that looks like just yet. <laughs> so yes, there is in some way, within the, the next four-year yeah. program. Yep. Yep. Um, Thanks. And 
in regards to that transition plan template question, um, that that could potentially be something that is offered as part of that shared um, shared support services hub access yep. to advice and things like that. Yep. Um, and just that last question there, is there any flexibility in the 10% admin fee? Um, this goes for all the costings. So what you've got in the costings, what's in the budget template is what's in the costing. So uh, I don't believe we can budge um, or change in that without having to go through the whole ministerial process again. Um, so hopefully that answers your question there, Erin. Um, again, if there's any other questions, it's it's five five to twelve. So I thank you very much for your attendance today. Again, if you have questions specifically, uh, you know about your particular application, send them through that LEP mailbox centralised email, um, and we are getting much better at responding in turnaround times. Um, so we appreciate your patience and um, all the best on your application. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Yes, and thanks, Lakshmi, for handling all of the questions. Okay, Good luck stop. with your application. <laughs>